Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I'm going to quickly talk about a method or two methods that actually come along with Flash SQL Alchemy to make your apps work a little bit better and handle errors a little bit better. And those two methods are the first or 404 method in Flash SQL Alchemy and the get or 404 method. And these allow you to return 404s instead of some kind of 500 error when running your app when you are querying for a specific object from the database. So to demonstrate this, I'll create a very quick example. So I'll quickly create a Flask app here and I'll configure the database. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a model that allows me to return one thing. What that one thing is doesn't really matter. The point is to show you how to use the OR 404 methods. Okay, so I'll instantiate the database and then I'll create a model. So I'll just call this, uh, let's say user. And it's only going to have two things in it, an ID and it's also going to have a name. So like I said, this isn't too important. The point is the query. So I'm going to create a route and we'll call this get name and it's going to take in an integer user id and of course i have to add that parameter to the function so i'll call the function get name as well and user id just like that and i'll return the person's name and for now i'll just put my name there so if we test this really quick we'll see that it returns my name so of course this isn't querying but this is just to verify that the app is working correctly so let's go here actually here and then get name is the name of the route that I created so it's telling me uh, not found because I need to pass in an ID so that ID will be, let's say, one to begin. So the name is Anthony. I'll put that in header tags so it's a little more clear. And I see it there. So the route works. So the important part is the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create the database tables. So from app import db, uh, db create all. And then I'll also create a couple of users in the database. So from app import user, Anthony is going to be a user. And another user is going to be, let's say, Michael. Okay, so I'll add these to the session. Whoops. Anthony and Michael. And then I'll commit. Okay, so if I query for users, I have both users there. So I'll go back to my app. And what I want to demonstrate is if I query for a particular user, so I have user IDs one and two in the database. So uh, let's just call this user. It's going to be user query get and then the user ID. And then instead of passing in Anthony here, I'm going to pass in the user dot name. So this should end up as the same result. It does. And if I change this to two, it ends up as Michael. So for the important part of this video is the or 404 part. So without using or 404, so I instead of using get or 404, I just use get. What happens if I supply an ID that doesn't exist in the database? Let's say 54. What happens is my app crashes. I get this attribute error. If I look at the console here, let's see. Uh, it gives me a 500 error for this because it cannot find ID 54. Well, if you're familiar with errors in HTTP, 500 errors means that something went wrong on the server end and 400 errors mean that the client did something wrong and in this particular case we want this to be a client error because they shouldn't have tried to access this page because 
there's no user with 54. Ideally, they would only try to go to users that exist. So to prevent the app from crashing completely when they try to access a page that doesn't exist, I can use the or 404 method here. So git or 404, so underscore or underscore 404. And what happens here is when I restart the app and I go to the page, I get a not found. And this error is now just a 404 error. This doesn't crash my app. It continues running and it tells the user what went wrong. It's basically telling the user that they're trying to go to a page that doesn't exist. So they need to try a page that does exist like slash one or slash two. And I can do the same thing with first instead of git. So first or 404 and it works in exactly the same way. First or 404 takes one positional argument and the reason why that messed up is because first requires some kind of query. So filter by, uh, let's say name equals, or I should say ID equals user ID, just like that. So git, you can pass in the primary key directly. First or 404 is the ending method for your query where you have some kind of filters uh, before the first or 404. So if I run this now, I get the same thing. It's Michael, and then I have Anthony here. So these are really nice when you're actually uh, having your app be used by real people. When you're testing Git or first is fine, but when you actually have it out there, you may want to consider using first or 404 or Git or 404, depending on what you are doing. So that's all I wanted to demonstrate in this video. If you have any questions about this, you can leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.